um, I don't really know how to say this, but um, please, I just want you to try to understand me. I may not be able to really explain. Um, this is, whole experience has been so, um, I don't know how to put it into words, an eye-opener for me. Um, I've been in the Lord for a while, but um, I've never had this kind of experience that I have, have had these past weeks. So being on the street has been a very refreshing thing to me, a very eye-opener th thing to me. And um, I, I don't know how to thank the Lord and the privilege to have been called into this work. So out there in the street, you know, when I came to Canada, I never believed that there are homeless people on the street. This is a big, rich country. Like, it's the envy of the world. Everybody wants to be here. And I never believed in my life that there are people that are called homeless, even in this country. And um, being in the streets has been something that I can't explain. Sometimes I get by home crying and, you know, all emotional and I don't know how to say it. The most amazing thing that came to my mind and I've seen out in the streets are that we think that we are the best people we dress up we come to the church and we worship i tell you that 80 percent of the people we have met out there on the street you talk to them and they said yes i know jesus i love jesus i pray to him every day there was even one day that we were passing and we met a guy reading the bible on the street he was reading the bible and i was like what this guy nothing no food no clothing out in the cold and yet sitting on the corner reading his Bible and when we went and you know spoke with him he said I'm a believer and I love Jesus and this is some of the things we hear mostly from most of these guys and then you see their hearts yes we may judge them some people may say what got them there and what did not get them there you don't know people's stories but the most amazing thing is that even in this situation, they are giving thanks to God. So who are we to complain? The very first day that I went out there and I came back, I was on my bed crying all night. And I said, Lord, I am so sorry. Who am I to complain? Who am I to even murmur against you? Who am I to ask for anything? Who am I? When people are out there giving glory unto your name, and I am here being given everything. I have a home. I have a family. I have a spiritual home. I have a spiritual family. I have people that love me. I have my kids. Everything is working. And a very little test. And I'm um, crying and weeping and saying, what am I doing here? I repented so much that day. And I'm here just to give God thanks that God brought me from. You know, when we are well, back in Africa... Another thing that the Lord has used this experience to teach me is that out there is the Jesus that we are actually should be serving. We come in here and we are all praising the Lord and lifting up our hands and doing all that. It's not bad. But out there, the Lord said, what I have given to you is not for your keeps. It's not for you to keep. Take it outside. Give it to the lost. Give it to the broken. Give it to the people that need it. He has filled us up with so much joy, so much peace and faith and hope. We're going to bust inside this place if we don't give it out. So I'm encouraging you because back home I never had an eye. I don't know what is giving to the like giving to the homeless. Back home we tag these people as wishes and wizards. That is what happened back home. People don't go near them. We call them, these are all uh, mentally healed people. But we don't see them that way. We call them wishes and wizards. And we, example, a person like me, I don't even notice them on the street. I don't notice them. They don't exist. All my years of Christianity and shouting, and I, I, I'm just boxed up in a building and doing competitions of who has what, who has this to give, who has that to give. And yet still, the real people that need her help, the real people that we need to give the gospel to, they are all out there in the street. And yet, I cannot even see them. This is one of the things that touched my heart when I was in that street. And I said, Lord, I am sorry. 
I'm so sorry that over the years, I could not recognize. I never had this understanding. But now you have opened my eyes and you have brought in so much peace. And I feel so fulfilled. Every time I go out and come back, I am like being filled up like I was down. And then suddenly I'm so filled up with the spirit and God's peace in my heart. And I feel so fulfilled in everything I'm doing. Like I look into the eyes of to be able to hug these people, to be able to give them a ride to where they can stay, to be able to even give a sandwich or a cookies to, to anyone, bring so much, to even be able to say Jesus loves you. We love you. We trust in you. It's going to be okay. It's a big privilege. And I... I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I just want to give glory and thanks to this God that has given me this opportunity and has taught me a new lesson and has made my heart to be sensitive to receive it. And I ask for even more, more of that grace, more of that understanding, more of that, you know, that heart to be taught, that teachable spirit is what I ask of the Lord. And I encourage you, you may not be able to go to the street, but look, ask the Lord to open your eyes every now and then at your workplaces, around your homes, in your families, wherever you are. There are people that actually really, really, really need to receive Jesus through you. Ask the Lord to show you how and help you to do it in Jesus' name. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're around, uh, last week we've been around people, what society calls, you know, broken, messed up, whatever, you know, and uh, you just realize that these people are just looking for truth, you know, they're just looking for love, they're looking for something real, something that's, uh, something's made them sway off the trail, you know, something happened to them where, they got addicted to drugs or something like that, but you know, they, they all have a story and you think like, oh, the government's going to help them and the shelter, but you talk to them and every one of them says like, the shelter is horrible, you get robbed, you get beaten up, stuff like that. So you see the situation and the stories, you know, of, of the lowest of the low in society, what, what, you know, what society says is low, you know, they've been hooked on drugs because of a reason, they've been raped, molested when they're young, stuff like that. You hear all kinds of stories, beaten up, and we just, it's, uh, it's changed my heart to see how bad re Toronto really is. It's opened my eyes to see the darker side and to see people's stories. You see people with mental illness, schizophrenia. You walk up to them and they're talking to themselves or they're talking to walls or some of them are addicted to drugs. And you just see uh, the brokenness and how the kingdom of darkness is taking over and how we as the kingdom of light, how we as the people of light should be shining a light and bringing light to that darkness and changing our country, changing our city as the people of light to shine the light, you know. And, you know, some of the stories we've encountered, just like, uh, you know, we, we've called ambulances for people, people overdosing. There was one guy that was blind and he was in a shelter, but he, he lost his way and he was just shuffling and the snow was so hard, uh, snowing down and he was just shuffling and we met him and then we uh, talked to him, we, we gave him some stuff and then we took him back to his shelter and this guy was blind so like if he didn't meet him, I don't know where he would have been because he, he was just shuffling, trying to find his way back to the shelter, but he couldn't, you know, he was just, and then we also found like another woman, Denise, she was... She, she had uh, no front teeth, but she's been beaten up. Um, her story was that her father-in-law raped her for many years and stuff like that. And she had a lot of pain and cancer and stomach pain. And we ended up praying for her and she got completely healed of all the pain. She couldn't feel it anymore. So these are the stories that we encounter. And we just try and love on people through giving stuff, through hugging them, even if they smell bad or if they, you know, Denise had like a contagious disease too, but we didn't care. We just, on her because you know that's not going to get on us if, if we have Jesus on us or you know so we just try and show the love of God through through what we can what we have what we can give you know and uh, uh, yeah we just encourage you to keep on bringing more winter like good winter clothing and stuff like that there some of them don't have that much and 
some of them are shivering and stuff like that. So, just, you know, whatever God puts on your heart to keep on giving. Good, clean clothes and, you know, Timothy cards. We, you know, we just bless them and we also should talk to them, hear their stories and tell them about Jesus. You know, we, just, we don't just give them stuff, but we also tell them about Jesus and try and hear what they need and what, what their stories are. And, and, you know, me and Queen both, our eyes have been open to a lot of stuff, to a lot of uh, darkness, and it just makes me want to even press on to God even more because He calls us to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted, you know, and He just wants me, me to seek God even more for, for that, to set people free and to bring Jesus to people, you know, so, yeah. Amen. Come on, give glory to the Lord. Come on. You know, it's not easy to do this type of work, guys. You really have to have a, a heart full of compassion to do it. And I even tell uh, Chris and Queen, make sure that you're doing this not because you want to be seen, not because you want to feel good about yourself, but because you have love in you to give. It is out of love that we do everything, you know? And again, guys, some of you guys are wearing the same clothes for months and uh, even a pair of jeans, shoes, whatever it may be. Bring it, guys. Bring it because they could really use it as well. Amen. So God bless you guys. We really, we thank you for, for all that work that you're doing as well. And, and we're going to continue, continue praying for you and, and allowing the Lord to, to use us all by bringing things so that they can have stuff to give as well. Amen.